Hello everyone, I am Ahmad and today we are going to solve one buckling example uh, in the elastic foundation. So in this example we assume a compressive member under actual force P in the compressive side is going to be buckle. So in this example we assume the element is uh, completely rigid as the result, we can neglect any bending stiffness of the member. So here we assume that we have an element which is supported at point A and at point B we have a roller. And we have three internal springs representing the elastic foundation with the stiffness of K. And each element is going to have the length of L. We have force P in the form of compressive load and here we will have also reaction force at point A which will be the same as force P and in the opposite direction. When we apply the load and we increase the load so the deformation will be like the dash lines. This is just illustration and we will calculate what is the mode shape later on. Assume that interval points are C, D and E. So theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, and theta 4. To calculate the buckling load, first we need to calculate what is the total potential energy. So first of all, we need to calculate what is the deformation at point B because point B is uh, moving toward the left and as a result, since we have force P at that point, we need to calculate what is the energy due to this force. So delta horizontal E can be calculated as L minus L cosinus theta 1 plus L minus L cosinus theta 2 plus L minus L cosinus theta 3 and L minus L cosinus theta 4. I can factor L 1 minus cosinus theta 1 plus 1 minus cosinus theta 2 plus 1 minus cosinus theta 3 and 1 minus cosinus theta 4. If we look at one element with the length of L as far as it is rigid it's not going to elongate or shorten because of the force so it will rotate and we assume that here this is theta 1 and the deformation is delta 1 so let's assume point c comes down delta 1 point d delta 2 and point e delta 3 So sinus theta 1 will be about theta 1 when theta 1 tends to be 0. Also sinus theta 1 will be delta 1 divided by L. As a result, we can assume that theta 1 is delta 1 over L. For the second part, for second element, 
one side the left comes down with delta one and right one comes down for delta two and the rotation will be theta two so theta two will be delta two minus delta one divided by l the same goes for the other two theta three will be delta 2 minus delta 3 divided by L and theta 4 will be delta 3 divided by L. As far as delta is very small, we can assume that cosinus theta is 1 minus theta 2 over 2 when theta tends to be 0. Or we can rewrite it as 1 minus cosinus theta will be theta power by 2 divided by 2. Coming back to our main equation for delta horizontal B. 1 minus cosinus theta 1 will be theta 1 power by 2 divided by 2. And the same for the other. thetas and now I can substitute theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 and theta 4 I can factor 2 so it will be delta 1 over L power by 2 plus delta 2 minus delta 1 divided by L power by 2 plus delta 3, delta 2 minus delta 3, divided by L power by 2, and delta 3 over L power by 2. I can simplify this equation. Delta horizontal B will be minus uh, 1 over 2L. Delta 1 power by 2 plus delta 2 power by 2, delta 1 power by 2, minus 2 delta 1 delta 2, plus delta 2 power by 2, plus delta 3 power by 2, minus 2 delta 2 delta 3, plus delta 3 power by 2. And then, more simplified version will be 1 over L, delta 1 power by 2, delta 2 power by 2, delta 3 power by 2, minus delta 1 delta 2, minus delta 2 delta 3. So this is the horizontal displacement of point B. As far as by increasing the delta, uh, the deformation decreases, so we can write down that energy for this one will be minus p times delta horizontal b so it will be minus p over l delta 1 power by 2 delta 2 power by 2 delta 3 power by 2 minus delta 1 delta 2 minus delta 2 delta 3 on the other hand when the element is under compression and it is uh, deformed as we sketched so the potential energy will be stored inside each spring so we can calculate what is the energy inside the spring w will be sigma 1 over 2 k x power by 2 so it will be 1 over 2 k delta 1 power by 2, k delta 2 power by 2, k delta 3 power by 2. And if I factor k, it will be delta 1 power by 2, delta 2 power by 2, and delta 3 power by 2. With these two functions, I can write what is the total potential energy, which is a factor of delta 1, delta 2, and delta 3. So it will be w plus v which will be k over 2 
delta 1 power by 2 plus delta 2 power by 2 plus delta 3 power by 2 minus p over l delta 1 power by 2 delta 2 power by 2 delta 3 power by 2 minus delta 1 delta 2 minus delta 2 delta 3 so now we have the total potential energy function and we are looking for the minimum value of p that this uh, system will lose its stability so to calculate uh, the minimum value of a function with three variables delta 1 delta 2 and delta 3 we need to make the first derivative or the variation by respect of each variable and then equal them to zero so round pi by respect of delta 1 should be zero round pi by respect of delta 2 and round pi by respect of delta 3 so round pi by respect of delta 1 will be k over 2 2 delta 1 minus p over l 2 delta 1 minus delta 2 Round pi by respect of delta 2, 2 delta 2 minus p over l, 2 delta 2 minus delta 1 minus delta 3. Round pi by respect of delta 3, k over 2, 2 delta 3 minus p over l, 2 delta 3 minus delta 2. I can simplify these three. So the first one will be k minus 2p over l delta 1 plus p over l delta 2 and there is no delta 3 in the first equation. The second one will be p over l delta 1 plus k minus 2p over l delta 2 plus p over l delta 3 and the last one there is no delta 1 p over l delta 2 plus k minus 2 p over l delta 3 equals 0. So here we have three equations with three unknowns but as you can see uh, all of them equals to zero so there is no solution for this type of uh, equations to have non-trivial solution now we need to force the determinant of the unknown coefficients to be zero i rewrite the equation k minus 2p over l p over l zero p over l k minus 2p over l, p over l, 0, p over l, k minus 2p over l times delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 equal to 0. So now let's assume that the matrix of the coefficients is called a the terminate of a should be zero for this we can use the matcat for example here we can have a matrix three by three and let's write the equations a minus two p divided by l the next one is p divided by l and 0 p divided by l k minus 2 p divided by l p divided by l 0 p divided by l and k minus 2 p divided by l this is a and you can write it down that this is a function of a p and l now if you are going to calculate it by hand the rest of the solution so you can just write determinate of a a b and l and then from here you can find out the 
evaluation. And if you look at it that uh, it is not as you expect, you can write simplify. And also you can write expand. Here is the equation. This is one method. We can bring this to our notes. So this equation needs to be zero. And how to calculate it here, you can see that we have P3 over L3. We have P2 over L2. We have P over L and K3. So we can divide the whole equation by K3. Then you will have 4 minus 4 times P over KL power by 3 plus 10 P over KL power by 2 minus 6 P over KL and plus 1 equals to 0. Now, if I assume that P over KL is X, then it will be minus 4 X power by 3 plus 10 X power by 2 minus 6 X plus 1 equals to 0. Then we can calculate the results. Still, you can use MATCAD if you want, or you can use your calculator. So you can write the equation minus 4x power by 3 plus 10x power by 2 minus 6 times x plus 1 and equals to 0. And here you can write solve and x. So here you will have all the results. If you want to have the solution in the float, so you can just write float. This is how it looks like. And you will have three answers for this calculation. This is one method. And so what do we have? We have x as far as we are looking for the minimum value of force p then we will write it from the minimum value so p over kl the first one will be 0 0.2929 as a result p critical number one will be 0 0.2929 kl the same goes for the other ones. So P critical 2 will be 0 0.5 KL and P critical 3 will be 1.7071 KL. So you can have these values uh, easily also from MATCAD. Control copy and here control V. We want to force it to be zero and here we can write solve by respect of p so if you write it down you might see k2 and l2 for uh, this reason and also we can substitute k power by two times L power by 2 power by 0 0.5 with KL and also we can assume K is greater than 0 as well as L is greater than 0. So here we will see uh, the results, the same thing. And I can bring this also to our calculation sheet. MathCat. Here it is. So 
the same peak critical one, two, and three. Now we have the minimum value of the peak critical. Now let's find out what kind of uh, shape mode we will have for each uh, critical load. And then we will compare the results with the software. So for uh, P critical one, it was 0 0.2929 KL. And also we had this uh, matrix. Now, if I substitute the value of uh, P critical one to this equation, I will have K minus two times zero twenty nine twenty nine K zero point twenty nine twenty nine K and zero so zero point twenty nine twenty nine K and let's calculate this value which will be forty one forty two K and 0 0.2929 k 0 0.2929 k and 4142 k times delta 1 delta 2 and delta 3 this should be 0 so we can see that still we cannot solve this uh, matrix because the result is zero for our variables but we can assume that one of the values uh, is with the value of one for example in this case we can assume delta one is one so as a result it will be 0 0.4142 k plus 0 0.2929 k delta two equals to zero and then we can calculate that two will be minus one four one four and the same if I use for example the third equation twenty nine twenty nine k plus times delta two plus zero point forty one forty two k delta three equals zero and if I substitute this value then delta three will be one. It means that Delta will be 1, minus 1, 4, 1, 4, and 1. Usually in buckling modes, we consider the maximum value to be 1. So in this case, we need to divide the entire uh, answer with 1.414. And then the eigenvector for the first uh, buckling mode will be Zero point seven zero seven minus one zero point seven zero seven. It doesn't matter if you write delta two to be one or uh, minus one. So what does that mean and how it looks like? So let's sketch for the p critical one, which was zero point twenty nine twenty nine k. Uh, delta is. 707 minus 1707 and if i sketch my column three here 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 and here so this is point a and this is point b And these are the stiffeners or the springs. Now, if uh, I assume that delta one goes down with 0 0.7, this value 707, uh, the middle one will go through the other direction with one. And the third one will be the same.
So this is the mode shape number one. We can do the same for the other shape modes. Here we can use MATCAD uh, to calculate the coefficient, perhaps easier. What you need to do, we bring A. And for example, instead of P, e, I will write 0 0.5 A times L. So here we can see the uh, answer. Also, I can use it for the other case, which was 1.707. 1. So I have the equations for the other modes. If P critical is going to be 0 0.5 KL. Again, you can assume that Delta one is one, then 0 0.5 K Delta two will be zero from the first equation and Delta two will be zero. And from the middle one, 0 0.5 K times Delta 1 plus 0 0.5 K Delta 3. Delta 3 will be minus 1. A and B. And here we have the springs. And the deformation. So it will be 1, 0, and minus one so it will be and for the third one p critical three is one seven oh seven one kl and then here i will have three equations again i assume delta one is one so minus 2.4142 k plus 17071 k delta two equals zero then delta two will be 1.4142 and then 1707 k delta two I'm using the third equation minus 2.4142k delta 3 and then delta, delta 3 will be 1. So again as far as the maximum value is greater than 1 so I can divide them with the maximum value so the formation here will be Seven oh seven one and seven oh seven. Now I can sketch the last mode shape. S prince. Again, it doesn't matter from which direction you assume it buckles. It happens in uh, either direction. So in this case, I will go with, the, for example, the other direction.
So this is the uh, mode shapes of the uh, of our example. Now we are going to calculate with the numbers and also checking with the software and understand better. What does that mean? Now let's calculate the uh, buckling forces with numbers. So how it would be in practice. So if we look at the undrained shear strength reported by soil investigation report, usually, for example, CU can vary. But let's have a loose, for example, soil with only 10 kilopascal undrained strength capacity. And then subgrade reaction coefficient. And we take it as 100. And then subgrade reaction. is A times Cu divided by D effective, which is the, for example, your pile effective diameter, considering the corrosion. And then we can calculate the spring factor, which is Ks times D effective and the spacing that you consider. So here in our example, for each A spring so we assumed one meter from one side and one meter from the other side as a result a spacing or the tributary length of each spring is two meters if i substitute subgrade reaction a C U divided by D effective. So the spring value will be A times C U times two meters, of which A is constant hundred, so it will be two hundred times C U. So let's go with the value of Cu which we assume it's 10 kilopascal so then k of the spring will be 200 times 10 kilopascal this is meter so it will be 2000 kilonewton per meter so this is a reasonable value for this uh, spring coefficient so P critical one was 0 0.2929 KL and it will be 0 0.2929, 2000 kilonewton per meter times two meters. So it will be 1171.6 kilonewton. Similarly, I can calculate P critical two, 2000 kilonewton. And P critical three, 6,828. So these are the first three buckling loads. Now let's have a look on the element. If we have this compressive element, which is supported every two meters, by a spring so then the buckling length effective buckling length will be two meters i assume the total length of this uh, compressive element is eight meters for this example now let's have a cross section uh, uh, i go with s355 for this example So let's go with, uh, for example, this one. So here uh, we know that Euler critical force is calculated according to pi 2 EI over L effective power by 2. So in this case, 
e is 210 gigapascal i is moment of inertia 1 4 2 10 power by 6 millimeter 4 and l effective is 2 meters so p critical will be pi 2 times 210 gigapascal times 1.40210 power by 6 millimeter 4 divided by 2 meters power by 2 so it will be 726 kilonewton so it means that uh, if we look at p critical 1 2 and 3 we see that p critical because of buckling of one element is uh, is 726 which is less than uh, those three so if i model this uh, case in a 2d uh, model so what would happen let's say this is element number one element number two element number three element number four so what would happen uh, the first four modes will be 726 kilonewton in other words the element itself is uh, weaker than the spring and after that as i said it should be in 2d if it is in 3d then you have two buckling modes uh, also perpendicular to the uh, plane of the modeling so the first four modes will go through one, two, three, four with the value of 726. And after that, it will continue with 1171.6 and then 2000 and then 6828. Now let's uh, select another one. Let's go with, uh, for example, 168, for example. With the thickness of 10. So if I calculate the critical force, for this section, that will be 15.64. So it will be 8,104 kilonewton. So here you can see that this critical load is greater than the first three relevant to the stiffeners or springs. So in this case, the first three will go with the P critical one will be 1171.6 and the next one 2000 and then 6828, 8104.4 will be the next. So this is how it looks like. Now let's go something between. Uh, if we go with this one, then P critical will be 3050. So it means that when we model this one, uh, the first one will go with 1171.6 and then the next one will go 2000 and then you will have 3050, 3050, 3050, 3050 and after that it will go with 6828 kN. So this is what we expect to happen. Uh, we have to notice that uh, when we are talking about the buckling, for example, here, uh, as we calculated, from 2000 to 6828 kN, uh, there is a big gap. So, and, and the first mode of the buckling is 726 kN. So, perhaps in our calculation, there will be more uh, modes between 2000 and 6828. We will see. With the calculation with the uh, RFM from the global, let's have a look. Now we are going to model with the uh, RFM. So this is a 2D model, and for this modeling, you need to model with 2D. And as you can see, it is modeled in 
only two dimension x and z and usually i go with upward to be positive in add-on you need to activate a structural stability now let's have one element i already have the uh, material so here we need to add the section and we are going to use the follow sections from European standard and it was 88.96.3 S355 2 meters 2 meters 2 meters and 2 meters then we have a hinge support at one end and also we can make a new one which is free in x direction at point b then we have the s spring which in zeta in x it is free and in x it was 2000 kilonewton per meter now we need to make the end of this member to be with hinge which is free in rotation about y and the next member for the next one I prefer to go with the last one in the beginning to have the symmetrical section or condition and now we need to have a load the self weight by default is always with the activation of the self weight so I will go with a new load buckling The value is 1000 in X. You can put 500 or whatever. So and also for this buckling analysis, we are going to have a structural stability add-on. So here I will go up to 20 modes to check what would happen to the structure. Now let's calculate it. So in the navigator, if you go to the next one, you will see the uh, buckling. So here you can see that we are in a situation that the local buckling of the element happens for the first one. The second one, as we expected, the third one and the fourth one. And then the fifth one is exactly what we calculated for the first buckling mode shape. Let's go back. The first four modes The second one The third one And the fourth one And now if we look at the 
critical load factor from the table below, you can see that the first four are 0 0.718. So here we can calculate what is the first four. P critical is 0 0.718 times the applied load, which is 1000 kilonewton. So it will be 718 kilonewton. If we come back to our former calculation, so it's uh, very close to what we calculated 726. Almost the same, uh, perhaps some some uh, simplification for moment of inertia in the table that I used. So, but it's uh, more or less the same. So, seven hundred eighteen kilonewton. And if we come back to RFM and check the next mode. So here, and you can see that the multi. Uh, or the critical load factor is 1.172. So here we can have this. Mode. Exactly the same as we calculated. And the load factor here is. So P critical will be 1.172 times P applied, and it will be 1,172 kilonewton. If we look at our results, so it's exactly the same, which was 1,172 kilonewton. And the shape mode is also the same. I can bring the other one. And the load factor was two. And it is 2000 kilonewton, the same value as we calculated. And if you go to the next mode, you can see that now the next mode is not uh, the third one we calculated because now with the smaller value of the load, it will go to the local buckling. Let's see where we will have the here 6.8 is the same value or the same shape mode that we calculated. And the factor was 6.828, which was 6,828 kN. We can compare with the Calculation 6828, we calculated these earlier, so we can see that the shape modes are as same as what we calculated earlier. Now let's change the profile to 168.3 and 10 millimeter of thickness. One six one sixty eight, and it was ten millimeter. Now we are using a, a stronger profile. As a result, we would expect that the buckling would happen in the S spring. So if we want to see a better
deformation or shape mode you can just change the factor here i put 0 0.5 this is the first one and it is 1.172 and this is the second one and this is the third one so it means that if the pile in this case is very strong then then a soil would uh, or the soil would uh, be the weakest point and then uh, the deformation will be like we what we assumed and also if we go to the third one 139 .7, 6.3 The first one, the second one, and the third one will not be the third one that we expected. So here you can see that now we have local and in the seventh. So here it comes to the mode of uh, a spring failure. That's all. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope uh, it was uh, informative and you could learn from this example. We will go to the other example in the next video with the uh, rotational spring instead of transitional spring. Thank you. Bye.